All right, good evening. My name is Joe Clayton. As you can see, I'm with Kimley Horn. And tonight my role is just to help out with the meeting to make sure that uh, there are no technical snafus and also to support with the Q&A part, which we're looking forward to later tonight. What I'm going to ask uh, for our attendees tonight to do is if you have a question, um, feel free to put it in the Q&A box. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see a taskbar and you'll see two little chat icons with, uh, with a Q&A written on them. So if, feel free to put your questions in that at any time during the presentation. So if you see something that you want to uh, get some more information about or you have a response to, put it in there. I will just let you know, we're not going to get to Q&A till the end, but feel free to put Q&A, your questions in at any time during the meeting. Um, when we get to the Q&A portion, I'll be going through and making sure that all of those questions are answered. Um, I might change the wording a little bit just to help out our technical uh, team members tonight, but that's how we're going to run it. All right, with that, I am going to hand over to our uh, technical team. Thanks, Joe. Uh, my name is Max Reeser. I'm an associate engineer with the city. I'm excited to present um, the projects. We're going to discuss the North Fremont uh, pedestrian improvements from Casanova to Canyon Del Rey, but we're going to call it the Gap Closure Project. And also, um, Mike Zeller with TAMC is here to uh, discuss Fortag. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass it off to uh, Mike for a presentation. Great, thank you, Max. Um, just give me one moment while I bring my presentation up. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see my screen and still hear me okay. Um, I am uh, Mike Zeller. I'm a principal transportation planner with the Transportation Agency for Monterey County. Uh, I'm really excited to be here tonight to um, give an update on the Fort Ord Regional Trail and Greenway project and how it connects in with uh, the City of Monterey's uh, <coughs> North Fremont Gap Closure project. Um, just by way of a, a little bit of a background, if you're not familiar with uh, the Fort Ord Regional Trail and Greenway project, uh, this was the, the vision of two CSUMB professors, uh, Fred Watson and Scott Waltz, to create a, a regional trail network um, throughout the, the peninsula and the former Fort Ord to uh, connect the communities around the former Fort Ord to open space, uh, recreation, schools, and jobs. Um, the, the trail is uh, envisioned to be uh, what's known as a class one path. So it's uh, paved and separated from the, the roadway where possible. Um, it's uh, uh, envisioned to be uh, ADA accessible or ADA compliance, so Americans with Disabilities Act. So uh, <clears throat> really a trail for all users. So a place where you could easily see um, someone with a, a wheelchair or a family pushing a stroller along with bicyclists and, and uh, walkers um, all using the trail to be able to access all the, the great um, open space and uh, um, other amenities that we have in, in our area. Um, as I mentioned, it's to enhance the connections between Fort Ord, Monterey Peninsula and the Salinas Valley. And you can kind of see that there's um, some different loops um, uh, around uh, uh, for the full alignment of the trail. So, you know, starting up in the north, there's a north, uh, uh, a northern loop that's around uh, the city of Marina and near CSUMB. Along there, there's a great point where you can um, look out and see the Salinas River. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, a, a CSUMB loop, um, as well as uh, one that uh, traverses along the National Monument to be able to access the trails and the monument. And then also a, a southern, uh, southern portion through Canyon Del Rey, Laguna Grande Park. Um, then also a spur, that little pink line that goes out towards Bryan Ranch. Um, so what we're really looking to do is just to en enhance the area and to give more opportunities for people to uh, use alternative modes of transportation, get out of their cars to be able to access um, all this great open space that we have. Um, another benefit of the, the trail system is to function as a habitat corridor. Um, so in places where um, we're uh, looking to construct the trail, you know, that gives us opportunities in some areas to do um, habitat restoration, and it also provides um, crossing opportunities for wildlife that may not be there currently. And talk about one of the um, uh, tunnels under 218 that's a part of the, the segment one project. And also uh, the project is meant to be complementary, not just to the built environment, but also the natural environment so that it fits in, it enhances, and it, um, it, it complements the area and complements what's already there. And it's not meant to be 
an additional, um, you know, an additional uh, piece of man-made infrastructure, something that uh, fits in with the, the the area that it's being constructed in. Um, <clears throat> The, the full segment, all 28 miles, um, was included in uh, Measure X, the Transportation Safety Investment Plan. This is a local transportation sales tax that was approved by Monterey County voters in 2016. Uh, Measure X includes $20 million for uh, the FORTAG project. And uh, we were also able to uh, complete the environmental review on the full 28 miles. So this uh, entire alignment has already received its uh, environmental certification. So now what we're looking at doing is constructing the um, trail in segments as we're able to secure funding. So for this uh, first segment, the Canyon Del Rey segment, we received um, over $10 million in a state active transportation program grant to um, design and construct this seg segment. So 82% of the funds are coming from um, state sources for this segment and the remaining 18% is from Measure X. So just really stretching those local dollars to be able to uh, bring in outside sources of funding. And um, as I mentioned, as, we, as we're able to secure additional sources of funding, then we'll be able to do additional segments of the project. So uh, focusing in more just on the, the Canyon Del Rey, uh, this first segment of the, the project that uh, we're currently working on. Um, as I mentioned, it starts at the North Fremont and Canyon Del Rey intersection and runs um, uh, along Canyon Del Rey and then through the Work Memorial Park. There's a segment that goes along Angeles Way and this is a, a dash line. And, uh, the, the trail there is, um, uh, there's, get into this a little bit more specifically when I go through each of these segments, but there's no um, physical improvements on Angeles Way, it's just wayfinding signage. And then the trail picks back up again on the other side of Angeles Way uh, along Del Rey Park. As I mentioned, the tunnel under 218 um, near the Frog Pond with a switch back up to Carleton, um, up Carleton to Plumas, and then along Plumas to Notre Buena, where it ends at uh, Delroy Woods Elementary School. Um, <clears throat> what I really like about this slide is that it shows just kind of how the, all the pieces fit together. And when we're talking about creating a regional trail network, how we can um, create and foster these connections that uh, you know bring together and link the uh, cities of cities of Monterey, Seaside, and Del Rio, and can provide opportunities for people to access um, uh, uh, the beach and open spaces that we have uh, without having to, to drive to them. Um, so as you can see here on the purple line, we have the Coastal Rec Trail um, that, that's already existing. The, the Lutagruna Grande um, segment that's shown in red and orange, this is a proposed segment um, of the Fortag Trail that we're looking to secure funding for. Um, but this portion of the project is proposed to uh, uh, create uh, or construct a, um, a crosswalk across uh, Del Monte, so you'd be able to access the Coastal Rec Trail and uh, make it safe to make that crossing um, into Laguna Grande Park. And then one of the, you know, either of the segment alternatives would be um, selected. Um, it connects up to the, the light blue line. That's the Canyon Del Rey um, segment that we're um, currently in final design for. And then as you can also see uh, the North Fremont medium bike lane shown in the, the lime green that ends at Casanova. And then where uh, the current project, the gap closure project picks up with uh, the black dashed line with uh, the bridge. So um, it's great to be able to you know, have all these different connections to be able to um, really uh, bring together a regional trail network. Um, so going through some of the segments um, in particular on the, the Canyon Del Rey um, project that we're currently working on. Um, starting at the North Fremont and uh, 218. Um, so right here, uh, that's where the, the connection with the gap closure project would occur. Um, <clears throat> the project would also put in a protected trail crossing. And what's great about this is that it sets back the, uh, the, the bike crossing, the trail crossing from the roadway. So it makes it separated from the roadway. And it makes it safer because as people are making uh, those turns onto Fremont, it puts the trail more in the line of sight of the, uh, the vehicle driver. So it makes it safer so that they can see if the people are in the crosswalk. Uh, the project would also maintain the, the bus stop um, and also the, the right turn lane that goes into the Safeway parking lot. And then the trail itself would be a trail along the roadway. So using the existing sidewalk and enhancing it to provide uh, the, the class one path. Um, so this would run along Canyon Del Rey um, to the backside of Safeway. Um, and then as you can see here, this is Work Memorial Park. 
Um, so if you're familiar with this area, there's a, a service road that was installed um, that goes through Work Memorial Park. Our project proposes to uh, repurpose uh, a portion of this road for the trail so it would be closed to uh, vehicles and trucks. There would be um, no vehicle access on this, would simply just be for uh, bikes and pedestrians. Um, and then the, the remainder of the hall road that um, would not be used for the trail, that gives us an opportunity to potentially do um, restoration work in this area um, rather than um, keeping that as pavement. Uh, the trail itself would run up the hill um, close to the, the tennis courts. Um, and if you've been in this area, this going up this slope here gives a really um, great look at um, the, looking back at Work Memorial Park, just a beautiful scenery, um, being able to be up on the, the slope and looking down. Um, the trail then runs around the, the tennis courts. Um, in, in front of the tennis courts there, if you're familiar, there's the Del Rey Oaks uh, Butterfly Garden. And then it would come down the, um, the ramp that's, uh, that's currently there. Um, enhance that ramp. Um, so then this comes into uh, Rosita Road and Angelus Way. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, there is no uh, physical improvements, no, no physical trail improvements or any kind of change to the configuration of the roadway at Angelus Way. Uh, this was in response to the feedback that we would receive from residents along Angelus Way of not wanting to um, change the configuration of their roadway. Um, so we were able to accommodate that. The roadway right now is currently a shared use roadway where you see bikers and pedestrians out there. So that'll remain the same afterwards. Um, what we uh, will be doing is uh, putting in a wife wayfinding signage at the beginning and the end of Angeles to point um, to the uh, different uh, trail access points. Um, <clears throat> then that brings us to uh, Delray Park at the other end of Angeles way. Um, so there is an existing trail there. So we would be able to uh, pave the trail and uh, run along the uh, behind the, the core yard uh, next, up next to Delray Oak City Hall, uh, proposing to uh, have sidewalk improvements that would also give better access to the transit stop. And that would run up to Canyon Del Rey. Um, so as I mentioned, there would be a tunnel under Canyon Del Rey, uh, which currently uh, bifurcates uh, the city of Delray Oaks and it makes it dangerous and difficult for people to cross to either side. Um, it's a high speed, high uh, volume roadway um, that just isn't really safe to be able to, to do crossings right now, especially think about taking a stroller or your kids across the roadway. Um, the, the tunnel will make it safer for people to get to either side. Um, on the opposite side of 218, the, the tunnel opens up into the Frog Pond Wetland Preserve. Uh, it opens up in an area that is currently uh, overgrown with brush and it's inaccessible. Um, so we're not uh, looking to, uh, you know, we're avoiding any kind of impacts to the existing trail system. So you can see uh, the dark green dashed line that's uh, marked as the existing walking path. Um, that will be maintained. There will be no impacts to that. Uh, the, as I mentioned, the trail, uh, the, the tunnel would be in a portion that's currently inaccessible, be tucked up against the slope. Um, there's also some trees in this area that we're looking to avoid and put in a, a switchback that would bring us back up to uh, uh, Canyon Del Rey State Route 218. And there's also a proposal for a new connection off of that switchback that would provide a connection to the existing uh, walking path. Um, so if you're familiar with the area, there's um, some stairs that bring you down to the existing walking path. And that makes it difficult for people with uh, wheelchairs or have mobility issues to be able to um, access and enjoy the frog pond. Um, so with this new connection, they would be able to uh, um, you know, either go under the tunnel or, or come down from Carlton along the switchback and then be able to um, get onto the existing walking path in an ADA compliant way. And also we uh, uh, designed the switchback to have a reduced footprint. So we're you know, minimizing the amount of impacts that, uh, that would be, um, uh, be made in the, in the frog pond. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the, the switchback comes back up to Canyon Del Rey and connects at Carleton. Um, along Carleton, uh, what we're proposing to do is to reconfigure the roadway. Uh, currently, there are some berms along the east side of the roadway that we're proposing the, that would be removed. And we would uh, reinstall parking along that east side right up along the, um, the gutter and then uh, the curb. Um, and then Moving out towards the roadway, there'd be two lanes of roadway, um, bi-directional, and the, the lane widths, uh, proposing some traffic calming measures that would reduce the lane width to help um, slow down vehicle speeds. And then on the opposite side of that would be the trail, would be a trail along the roadway. 
there are some trees in this area, so we would be looking to potentially meander the trail to avoid any kind of impacts to trees so we can preserve those. And then potentially in areas where the, the trail meanders and it gives us more uh, room in the roadway, there's a potential that we could possibly uh, uh, re uh, install some uh, additional uh, parking pockets on that west side. So to give some more parking on, on Carleton. Um, <clears throat> then up at the, the top of Carleton, it connects in with Plumas and it just runs along Plumas. There's a little bulge out where uh, we are avoiding some PG&E infrastructure and then it ends at uh, Noche Buena. And we're also putting in some enhanced uh, crossings to make the, um, uh, the, the route to school um, safer for school kids that are walking to Del Rey Oats, uh, Elementary. Um, so with that, as I mentioned, we are currently in the uh, initial stages of our, our final design and we're taking public comments on this first, uh, first segment of the Fortag project. Um, you can um, uh, find out more information about the project at our project website at the link here. And also at this website, there's uh, a further link that can take you to an interactive web map. And on that web map, you can drop pins on different portions of the trail and leave us comments. And we're taking comments on this until uh, July 15th, at which point we'll be able to compile all the comments and then put out a, a response to everybody that we've, um, all the comments that we've received. Um, so again, I just wanna uh, really thank the city of Monterey for having us uh, tonight to be able to present our project. We're really ex excited about the gap closure project and to be a, a partner and a, a coordinator with the city uh, to be able to um, you know, put in these regional trail connections. So thank you. Thanks a lot for the presentation, Mike. Really appreciate it. Um, and now let's move on to the gap closure project that's within the city. I'll pass it over to Frederick Metner at uh, Kimley Horn. Uh, thank you, Max. I'm going to share my screen as well. Great. Can everybody see it? Good, there we go. So uh, thanks, thanks, Mike, for that presentation. Uh, you know, the Fortac Trail is a, is a, is a flagship project, um, you know, for the Monterey Bay area. Um, you, it's gonna enhance bicycle uh, riding and, and people walk in tremendously. And um, of course, so here we are with this gap closure project that uh, we're gonna talk about tonight to show how, um, you know, the, the bicycles and pedestrians can connect um, specifically along North Fremont um, 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 to, to, to the Fortac Trail. And of course, we have this gap between Casanova and Canyon del Rey, and that's the project that we're going to talk a little bit tonight. So Mike shared with you the Canyon del Rey or Highway 218 section on the right-hand side here. We know that the medium bike lanes on all three month ends at Casanova so the project we're talking about tonight is really closing up this last block of North Fremont Street um, then between Casanova and um, Canyon del Rey Boulevard Highway 218. So Mike shared with you also, um, you know, all the regional trail connections. Um, you know, I'm not going to delve in too much about it, but I think it's important to realize that, you know, the orange line here is the North Fremont connection that we did. And then we have the connection down Casanova which is a class three facility that gets you to the, to the uh, rec trail. And then if you go up Casanova via class two bike lanes, you can also connect via fairgrounds drive to Mark Thomas, right? So on the south end, there's connections into the city. And then we have the gap closure on the north end. And then TAMSI is, um, is currently in the process of talking to some of the stakeholders about actually extending the potentially the medium bike lanes also further north on North Fremont. And then very interesting is that the city of Seaside just won a substantial grant from Caltrans to um, improve bicycle facilities along Broadway that will eventually also connect to the Fort Dack Trail. So uh, even more connections further um, to the north of this, uh, the, the, or the, the intensive network that we see for bicycles and pedestrians. So we're going to look a little bit at the existing conditions and you know trying to define the challenges um, of this project. Um, so this is a picture taken looking south and uh, approximately at the intersection of um, North Fremont and uh, Canyon del Rey. 
Um, there's actually guidance that, you know, the pedestrians should cross here. There's no crosswalk further down. The picture on the right shows you where the crosswalk actually ends, and you can see that there's a bus stop. Um, and this is actually what happens fairly frequently, is people that do want to be on the west side of Fremont actually walks in the roadway, um, you know, extremely unsafe. Um, there is a dirt path on the inside of the guardrail, but that has deteriorated and, you know, walking there is actually pretty dangerous. You could actually fall down the canyon. Um, this is a look, a uh, picture taken looking north and you can see where the MST bus stop is as well. So it's quite interesting. We have a bus stop, but no connection from this bus stop um, heading south. So what are the issues here? We have no sidewalk, we have no bike lane and tremendous safety concerns. People walking in the roadway, people biking the roadway. If you're in a wheelchair, you would also be biking on that shoulder bit that there is. So the city um, has started the construction and there's actually some of the work done here already and I'm gonna walk you through it. So this aerial photo is Casanova. Um, on, on this end, on the, on the right-hand side, uh, left-hand side here, and then, of course, North Fremont. Um, so you can see here on the bottom end, the left-hand side is where the medium bike lanes on North Fremont ends. Um, there is currently a connection that you can cross. You, you're going to push your bike to get to the sidewalk, cross again, and then, um, you know, the, and this is where the big old gap is, right? So there's a little bit of sidewalk constructed, and it's wide enough for a trail. Where you see the hatched area is where the city... Um, had to do some stormwater treatment preparation as part of the North Fremont project. You can see there's some drop inlets um, and then uh, the outfall um, you go know, at the, at the right hand side of, of the of the picture here. Um, you can see the lanes and you can see where the work has continued. So basically the part of the project is to continue um, the, the the sidewalk um, here on the on the on, on the west side of the facility and get um, over the, the, the uh, canyon that we have. So this here you can see in the next picture, here's the drop, um, the, the drop into the, into the canyon, um, and then um, the gap then exists over the canyon and then trying to connect in to the, um, the crossing here at, at 218. So the challenges that we have in this section is actually pretty substantial. This is drop off into the canyon, um, you know, because of that drop, we uh, looked at options for structural elements bridging that canyon. And we're going to talk about um, a couple that we looked at and some options for the bridge. There's severe right of way constraints and ownership of, of property um, in this gap um, closure that we're working on. There's an environmentally sensitive area um, um, that we need to avoid. Um, we're going to show you the multi jurisdictional um, elements of the project. There's substantial PG&E facilities um, that is above and underground um, in this area, and uh, plenty of other utilities, stormwater outlets. And then, of course, there's a seaside has a maintenance access from their side um, that goes to the ESA facility as well that we, that we need to, to plan for. So a couple of pictures about the drop off into the canyon. Um, this is um, standing on the south end looking north. You can actually see here also a, a, a sewer manhole, um, oh, sorry, a stormwater manhole. You can see there's another one up there. You can see some utility lines. The next one is about the, all the, the overlap of ownership uh, boundaries and the, specifically the ESA area. So the green blob that you see on this area is what is regarded as an environmental sensitive habitat area that we need to avoid in, in the provision of this uh, facility, the trail connection between Casanova and um, Canyon del Rey. The red line that you see here coming from the top and then having the, jo the, the, the break in it and then going towards the diagonally across is the city of Monterey on the left and the city of Seaside. Um, but quite interesting is ownership of this tri triangular piece of land is Seaside. So Seaside owns land in the city of Monterey. So that's just an historic element that we picked up as we did the uh, plat research for, for our project. And then, of course, Canyon del Rey is Highway 218. So Caltrans actually owns um, substantial right of way here where we connect to the Fort Dag Trail. 
some past efforts that the city has gone through was um, this gap was actually included as an additive alternative in the North Fremont bike and bed access study and safety project. So the lanes that are in the media now, there was a design in, our, in, in, in the bed set that went out, um, you know, with, with would actually have continued the facility up to Canyon Del Rey Boulevard. Um, we had, um, uh, there was a retaining wall that required what, what that required some, uh, um, sorry, there was two options. So there was a retaining wall that would have accommodated pedestrians and bikes. Um, we also looked at an option of continuing the median bike lanes in the median to Canyon Del Rey, but that would have required road widening and some right of way acquisition, um, you know, which was um, infeasible. Caltrans would not um, have funded a project that would require right of way acquisition. Um, for the, and that's one of the conditions for the grant for the North Fremont uh, bike lanes. And of course, the bid that came in on this block was, I think, $2.9 million um, you know, just for this one section with all the construction and, this, and, the, and the, 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 the structural work. Um, this bid was well over the um, grant that was received by, um, by, by Caltrans or by the city from Caltrans. Um, and subsequently, the city decided to only complete the stormwater features um, and rather do a separate project um, on, on the gap, gap closure. In 2019, the city also applied for a Prop 68 funding grant, but unfortunately were unsuccessful. Um, so, you know, after that, the city decided then to start with a design project and go to TAMSI, um, you know, and say, let's uh, somehow find funding to do the gap closure to connect the North Fremont bike lanes to the Fort Dag Trail at Canyon Del Rey Boulevard. So as part of the design, um, you know, we developed a couple of bridge, op bridge options um, the, the in, in working through a, a sidewalk with a retaining wall um, option. Um, you know, that was one of the structural options. The other one was to do a pedestrian bridge. Um, you know, we, we looked at several options and I'm gonna share some of those with you tonight. Um, the city due to limited funding, um, you know, has leaned towards as the, the concept that's out here, um, also being um, a, a fairly low cost um, item, despite it being low cost, it's still very expensive. So the idea is to do a weathered steel structure. Um, it will um, be 12 feet wide. Um, there will be lighting on the bridge, uh, pedestrian level lighting. Um, and of course the deck would be concrete um, so to have full ADA compliance. Um, the alternatives for other bridges, I'm gonna share a couple with you, um, were more expensive. Um, I wanted to mention that the, 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 the alternative where we actually had the trail adjacent to the roadway, uh, where we required a retaining wall was um, number one, much more expensive than this option. But another element of that was we needed soil nails to go in underneath the roadway. So which meant that we had to close down um, North Fremont um, for traffic. And um, the feasibility of that was just um, not, not great. So we decided not to go for that structural option and instead go for the pedestrian bridge. Um, so it's a class one mixed use path, 12 feet wide, prefabricated steel. It's called a Pratt truss style. So here you see what it looks like. ADA compliant. Currently, the, the, um, one of the options is to do steel cable railing. Um, the picture above actually shows another option where you can do sort of a great um, um, option where it's not a steel cabling, but it's great to protect um, care pedestrians from um, falling off the bridge. It has a rustic metal look. Um, the weathered steel actually um, lasts pretty well in, in this environment. And of course, there would be pedestrian level lighting on the bridge as well. So some of the other options that we looked at, um, you know, well, sorry, this is the typical bridge. It's a Pratt bridge. You can see the layout here. These are painted ones. Um, and it has a horizontal rail option. Um, paint um, currently is not a great option. And there's two reasons for it. The paint is very susceptible to Graffiti, um, the graffiti goes on it fairly easily and needs to be maintained. And of course, um, you know, you need to paint every three years just because of the weather conditions as well. 
Some other options that we looked at were also galvanized bridges. Um, and this is, is also another type of bridge. Um, galvanized bridges would add about another 15,000 in additional cost. Regarding the decking, um, so the concrete deck is standard. Um, we, we also looked at steel grating and the reason for the steel grating was to actually the impact, potential impact of, of you know, the, 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 the ESA area underneath and the shadow underneath the, the, the concrete structure, but we've been able to mitigate that with a height of the bridge. Um, the, the steel grating was substantially more important, especially if you needed to make it ADA compliant. Um, here is the railing options that is standard on these bridges. Um, the steel cables um, adds another 18,000. If you do the grid that I showed you in the beginning, we're looking at about 10 to $25,000 in additional cost. So the question that many people have asked is, well, how are we going to connect the, the this gap closure to the North Fremont bicycle facility. So currently, you know, if you um, if you get to the point where the medium bike lanes end, you would have to cross, um, get onto the sidewalk, and then cross again, and then you would continue in the trail across the bridge. Um, this is not conducive to great cycling. And we know the avid cyclists um, are, are really keen on not having to do this because they need to push their bike. So the option that we're doing, including in this design, is to have a connection where you can take your bicycle. So there will be like a holding area here. You press a push button, it's almost like a pedestrian push button, which will be a bike one. And then during that, uh, or when you push the button, you would get a green face for a bicycle to actually come in or come out of the bike facility, cross this area and get onto the bike trail. It is a scramble signal. That's the phase we use. And what, what it is a bike scramble means that all directions of traffic get stopped and only the bikes get to go. After the bike has crossed this area, um, it goes back to signal timing and traffic as, as usual. So, in, so we call this an A to C alignment instead of an A B, C alignment to get back on. Looking a little bit at the design. Um, so here is that uh, crossing that we just spoke about. Um, Casanova is on the left-hand side. This little bit of pavement is already done. So this first gray area here and the green is where the, the hatched areas that you saw on the aerial photo. So we're gonna continue the concrete um, uh, trail 12 feet wide um, and bring it in to where we connect onto the bridge. It'll be 12 feet wide. It will be a mixed use path. There is a, an access point here into the pg &E facility. So a driveway with a gate that we maintain. Um, and then where there's some extra space here, where it's gonna be a landscape buffer with clean water features um, that's required um, for the, coastal, uh, the, the central coast stormwater quality um, requirements. The gray area here continues the bridge um, and the bridge will have head walls, straight bridge on, and then we get to where we land. We're gonna continue the trail 12 feet wide as a mixed use path. We bring it in behind the bus stop, right? So we retain the bus stop, don't touch it, right? I think that's the bus stop. And then Mike showed you where we connect to the four tack trail on this end. So basically with the four tack trail coming in, then this with this connection, we close the gap between the Fort Tack Trail and the medium bike lanes. The bus stop, so MST um, uh, expressed that they have no real need to install any additional facilities at this bus stop. They would keep it as it is now. So that's just one feature and maybe it is worth uh, um, mentioning. Um, so not the need, they, they do, do not see installing a shelter or benches, just keeping the pad and the actual pole that indicates the bus stop. Looking at a little bit of construction cost and maintenance costs. So the total construction cost for this is estimated at about 1.5 to $2 million. Um, so that will include the trail plus the bridge. Um, the bridge with all the footings would be between 560 and $600,000. Maintenance, for the path itself is about $4 per lineal foot of path and the bridge um, $11 per lineal foot per year. And that 
also um, equates to general maintenance, um, you know, the weathering, um, lighting, and all the other stuff. So that's why the bridge cost is a little higher. Um, you will see extensive ranges in our cost. You know, I think we know with COVID-19 and inflation right now, there's huge volatility in, in, in costs and things are going up. So, um, you know, that's why um, these costs are very preliminary and, and based on just best, our best um, estimates based on current conditions. So this project is currently only funded for design. Um, the goal is to have it a, what we'll call a shovel ready project by the end of 2021. Um, and at that time, the city and we'll, we'll collaborate with uh, Caltrans and TAMSI to look for um, grant funding to actually build it. Um, and then the last bullet here is there's a, a questionnaire out on SurveyMonkey on the city of Monterey's website, where you can also participate and have some comments and, and, and there's some questions you're gonna ask really easy, really quick. You can do it on your cell phone. I actually checked just before our meeting here and there, we already had 25 responses. So thank you for those who participated. And um, yeah, well, please go and then if you have anything more that you wanna add or any questions you wanna ask, um, you know, I think now is the time. Um, I think we're at the end of the presentations and I'm gonna hand it back to Joe Clayton. I just wanted to mention that um, we have Joe Arroyo here. If there's any um, any of the participants um, or the visitors who wanted to um, partake in, in, in Hispanic and speaking Spanish, Joe can do translation for us. And Daniel Carley is here from Kimmy Horn. Um, he is the design engineer on this project um, and he can ask uh, answer any questions on, on design detail. And I'm gonna hand it back to Joe, thank you. Thank you, Frederick. Great presentation. Just reminding people that if you joined a little bit late, tonight we're taking questions through the Q&A box. So if you have a question to ask, put it in the Q&A box. All right, uh, our first question, uh, how many members of the public are logged in tonight? We've got uh, just over 30 people tonight. Okay. Uh, got a question on how tall would the sides of the bridge part be above the walking portion? Uh, yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, the bridge um, would be about 42, or excuse me, 48 to 54 inches above the uh, walking path to the top of the bridge. So this came in during Mike's portion of the presentation. So I just want to confirm that. That's good. Okay. All right. Uh, we've had a question about the uh, why a regional trail was selected to go through a residential neighborhood. If a member of tonight's team could just take us through that thinking. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sure thing. Um, so the the trail alignment for um, the, the Fort Ord Regional Trail and Greenway, as I mentioned, was. Uh, reviewed and um, certified in a environmental impact report. So the, the alignment that was selected uh, was evaluated against um, several different um, potential alternatives, um, one of which for the, um, the Canyon Del Rey segment did look at using uh, State Route 218 Canyon Del Rey and bringing the trail down that road. The, um, the issue with that alternative um, in particular, uh, along with the, the safety issues of being along a, um, a high volume, high speed roadway is that there's uh, physical constraints on the roadway as well. It's just not wide enough to be able to put in a class one um, facility that's separated from the roadway, um, needing uh, 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 eight feet of uh, width for the, the path along with uh, two foot buffers. And then since it's along a state facility needing an additional foot for um, signage to provide that uh, uh, space for the signage. Um, so there just isn't uh, the space along uh, 218 to, to put the facility. Uh, the reason the alignment um, uh, that was selected um, was chosen is that if you look in this area, and I apologize, I don't have the, the map up, but there's four great parks just in, um, you know, within a mile, mile and a half of each other. There's the Laguna Grande Regional Park, Park Memorial Park, uh, Delray Park, and Frog Pond uh, Wetlands Preserve. And all of these uh, parks are within uh, relative uh, close vicinity of each other, but there was really not, no way to, um, to access these parks and to get to them 
uh, uh, without uh, driving. There's no, uh, you know, really walking paths that make it easy. So putting uh, the, the trail system along the alignment that was selected links these four parks uh, together. It makes it easy to, to access them without having to drive. Uh, the portion that um, goes along Angeles, as I mentioned, there are no physical improvements on the, the roadways um, based on the feedback that we heard from the, the residents. There's just trail signage. Um, and then the, the portion that goes along uh, Carleton, uh, we had heard that uh, the residents um, along uh, Carleton uh, um, had some displeasure about the configuration of the roadway. So we saw this as an opportunity to, to be able to reconfigure the roadway in, in a way that uh, the residents were asking for to restore um, some of the parking, to remove the berms along the, the east side of the roadway. And the, potentially um, where I mentioned uh, with the path would meander to uh, miss uh, uh, hitting trees to, to be able to pre preserve them. Where there's additional width in the roadway, we may be able to put it back some parking on that west side as well. Um, so uh, essentially, um, that was the, the rationale for uh, the reason that that alignment was selected. All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, we have a question about um, opportunities to improve uh, recreation routes at the north and east parts of the city, particularly pertaining to not just bicycles, but powered bikes, uh, skateboards, scooters, things like that. Uh, does, are you able to comment on that? That would default to me, but I don't have a, a great answer at the moment. I was project focused coming into this and didn't have the bigger picture in mind. Um, so we'll, we'll make a note of that. Um, I can get back to Mr. Brassfield on that one. Okay. Uh, we have a question uh, whether or not the running path um, along, at Work Park along the creek was considered. Um, so I believe that's in reference to uh, the portion of the um, existing trail that goes around the, the garden center um, near Work Memorial Park. Um, we did uh, um, take a look at that. There are some flooding issues in that, in that area. Um, so that's why it wasn't selected. And we decided to um, go up around the um, other side of the, the garden center and then ultimately um, bringing up uh, the trail around the, the tennis courts. Great, thanks Mike. Uh, when will the gap be completed? Um, when we can fund it. Um, we're, we're our, our, our plan is for a shovel ready project by the end of the year. Um, but seeing as, as COVID has greatly limited our ability to fund these type of projects, um, we'll aggressively go after grants, um, but we don't have an exact time frame on when we will actually construct this project. Uh, but the goal is a shovel ready project by the end of the year. Okay, hoping that we can get a bit more detail on why a tunnel was a tunnel under Canyon Del Rey, sorry, Canyon Del Rey was selected, uh, and why a bridge wasn't the option given. Potentially, it's you know obviously not flood prone the way a tunnel might be. So the the reason a bridge wasn't selected is that there are overhead utilities in that area. Um, so the the size of the structure that would need to be um, constructed to, to build a bridge over 218. Um, uh, the, just the, the size of the structure itself was uh, problematic, but also avoiding those um, overhead utilities wouldn't be possible. So those utilities would likely need to be relocated and that's an, an additional um, cost that can be quite high at times. Uh, the, the tunnel itself uh, is um, we're, uh, looking to design it so that it has positive drainage so the flooding isn't an issue in there. Great. Uh, is it possible to continue the median bike path to close the gap from Casanova to Canyon and then possibly connect to a median bike path on the seaside side? Frederick, I think this one's appropriate for you. So we, we did look at that option uh, previously. Um, unfortunately, the road narrows um, in between, you know, because and it's primarily because of, of this, of, of the Canyon. Um, you know, you also notice there's no parking and we have a dedicated right turn lane. So, so to fit the, the, um, the bike lanes in, in the median, we need to obtain right away or we need to expand the roadway into the canyon. And obtaining right away would have mean then we impact Safeway and the Black Bear Diner. 
um, which is not feasible. Also, Caltrans would not fund, so we couldn't have gone for the grant application for the North Fremont project if there was right away acquisition required. Um, the, the last aspect of was also the, the median bike lanes hit in Canyon Del Rey, um, you know, with narrower lanes and trying to accommodate the traffic and the bikes there would have been a Caltrans design exception, but that's um, something we probably could have worked on. But the, the, the constraints in that one block, especially with right away and cost was severe. And that's why we opted not to keep it um, in the median for that section. Regarding further north and seaside, I think the median actually widens out um, more in the seaside. Um, there are a lot of left turns, many more than what we actually had here on, on, on in, in Monterey. Um, so, you know, there's no movement yet to get going on, on looking at that option, um, you know, but we do believe it may be feasible just because the median is nice and wide there in the seaside. Okay. We've got a member of the community who's a bit concerned about how long a metal bridge would last versus a rebar or concrete bridge and gave the example of the weathered railroad bridge north of Marina off Highway 1. Are you able to dive into the advantages of a metal bridge versus a rebar concrete bridge? So we typically design the, the, the infrastructure, right? Roadway and bridge infrastructure for a lifespan of 20 years, um, sometimes a little longer. Um, you know, this bridge is not carrying really traffic. So the only forces on it is going to be itself and natural weathering and, you know, potential movement of the, of the, of the uh, foundations and the walls, aired walls. Um, uh, the, 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 so that, that's a structural life, right? We, um, I think the, uh, uh, doing a concrete bridge with rebar would have been uh, substantially more expensive than this, you know, the, that actual truss is prefab that gets, so we pour the actual the two ends of the foundations and we drop the bridge on top of it. Um, you know, um, so, so I think Daniel, I don't know if you have anything to add, but that's, that's really, I think it's, yeah, that's, that's the essence of, uh, of design and for the structures. Yeah, and I believe that the steel structure lifespan is actually closer to the 75 year mark. So with proper maintenance and um, inspections and cleaning and um, the, the intent of the design life is, is about 75 years. Um, so it, it would last a little bit longer than, um, than the 20 years. But uh, to Frederick's point, the, the concrete would be more expensive and harder to construct. Great. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, there's a question from a member of the community who's saying that when the city first originated uh, the idea, if there was originally a separate right turn from Canyon Del Rey. Uh, where did this idea go? Uh, well, that's not the city's right of way, so we don't have jurisdiction to dictate uh, what we do on Canyon Del Rey. Um, I don't know if, Mike, do you have any further input on um, the Canyon Del Rey corridor and whether a right turn um, is going to be warranted for the Fremont turn? Um, I'm I sorry, can... I don't have um, specific I... information on that, but I can... Um, get an answer to that question and follow back up. Yeah, Mike, maybe I can help out, right? So, so, so there has been for for very, very long ago. I think it's been on the books to actually do a, it's called a west a eastbound right turn lane. So, if you go away from the ocean and you want to turn on to Canyon on onto Fremont from Canyon already, there was a right turn lane plan. Um, currently, you know, volumes have slowed down, I think also with some improvements, um, you know, happening elsewhere, but the volumes for that right turn movement is slightly less. And also, I, I believe TAMSI is looking at the traffic operations in close collaboration with Caltrans. Um, but uh, from previous work that was done on 218, as part of the corridor study, it was determined that that right turn lane was actually not needed from a capacity perspective. Okay, uh, we have a question from a member of the community who's wondering whether or not there are any opportunities to give uh, aesthetic input to the style or design of the bridge. 
We are open to all input. Um, yeah, I mean, um, we kind of ended up where we did um, and tried to lay out our decision paths mostly around cost, um, but we're welcome uh, to, to all input on the aesthetics of the bridge. Great. Uh, we have a question from a member of the community who's asking, uh what will be allowed on the bridge pedestrians bikes how many lanes etc yes it is a bike and, and and uh bike and ped bridge uh it will be two lanes wide uh both ways um uh, our total lane width will be 12 feet um that was at a tmc recommendation we had originally designed a, a 10 foot wide trail but um for comfort and safety uh, we're working to increase the width of the trail. Great. Uh, what is the plan for the sloping sidewalk next to the PG&E plant? Um, it should be a, a relatively standard uh, driveway approach. Um, the sidewalk will be sloping into that uh, like bioretention sort of area for stormwater treatment. Uh, but the topography is relatively flat and uh, it, it'll be a, a relatively standard driveway in front of PG. Right. So we've got a couple of questions about access for emergency uh, service vehicles. So whether or not they'll be able to uh, access the plant or the park for fire safety and similar issues, and whether or not the right hand turn onto Casanova from Fremont, uh, whether or not they can actually physically make that turn. Uh, maybe Daniel, you can speak to turning movements better than I can. Yeah, uh, the right turn onto Casanova, we did look at that from a truck turning standpoint and uh, emergency vehicles are able to make that turn. Um, and same with the um, access to the uh, backside driveway of the pg &E plant, that driveway is also sized um, to accommodate um, the larger vehicles that they bring in and out of there uh, also for um, their maintenance and tree trimming operations. Great. Uh, member of the community is asking if you have current usage data on how many people are currently using the existing pathway. I don't have any current usage data. Frederick, do you by chance? I don't have it uh, ready. I think let's. Um, I think we should check in with um, with the traffic engineer and maybe post something on the website, Max. I would recommend that. But there is substantial use, um, you know, both across, um, you know, uh, North Fremont and along North Fremont because of the facilities. Remember that the the, the facilities, the, the installation of the bike lane in the median also accommodates. Um, protected bike facilities across um, North Fremont and one should incorporate that as well. That was part of the money that was spent in the upgrades. Uh, so we have a question from a member of the community uh, that they're, they're a bit concerned that given the funding, potential funding uncertainty, is there going to be a potential future where only some segments may be completed and not others? And so, uh, you know, you might have even more gaps as part of the project. Um, they've given the example of the current end of the North Fremont project on Casanova is rather challenging for bicycles and they don't want to do that. Yeah, we, we recognize those challenges. Um, I'm not sure what uh, segment we'll be constructing for tag through Laguna Grande, Mike. Do you, do you know the time frame on that segment? Um, it's really just dependent on us being able to secure funding for that segment. Yeah, so so the game plan is to try to align those two, the, the segment of the Fortag Trail through Laguna Grande Park uh, with the gap closure project um, is really one of, is both of our goals is to try to get those to be aligned together. Okay. Funding dependent. So I can maybe just also respond that we, we've seen uh, uh, recently in the last few years an increase in, in funding for active transportation projects like this, right? And they are also coupled in what we call safety projects, right? So the fact that the gap closure project is a project where people need to walk in the roadway 
is a safety concern. So, so we do believe that, especially you know, on the gap closure and even from the Fortex side, that they will be great candidates, especially if they shovel ready to actually qualify for some grant funding. Um, I think just this year, um, CTC um, approved uh, several million additional dollars for ATP projects um, in California. Hopefully this is an easy answer. What type of lighting is being proposed for the bridge and will it be lighted through the night? Uh, we are proposing pedestrian level lighting on the bridge. We haven't worked through um, the exact details on timing or um, how long it would be lit, but it would um, be kind of the focused lighting on the bridge deck um, within the, the limits of the bridge. And it, and it cannot be bright lighting because of the environmental um, the sensitive area underneath the bridge, right? So it's going to be really focused on just um, providing enough visual um, for, for, you know, for, for, for the bridge itself, lighting it up. Uh, follow up question to that. Is there an option for it to be so, uh, powered by solar? Um, that is a good question. I'm not sure we would have to look into um, the manufacturer's recommendation on solar lighting for the bridge. We can look into that. Okay. Uh, another question on aesthetics, um, needing a bit of clarification. The problem with doing these things on screens, really, is the current design orange, or is that a actually like a rusted, rustic wood aesthetic? It is, um, yeah, orange, it, the rendering colors and things sometimes can be off a little bit. So um, the intent is not to have it be orange. It would be kind of the, the rusted uh, steel, um, softer brown, reddish brown kind of weathering of the steel. Is that like core 10? Yeah, similar. That's it. So if like you, the line core 10 is pretty easy to Google if you uh, check out maybe in higher def. I can maybe say if you go to Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz has a few uh, of these rustic bridges crossing the San Lorenzo River, um, you know, and they've been very happy with them. They've also installed a couple of galvanized ones closer to the ocean, but the, the wrought iron, this rustic feel has been uh, a, a very success uh, story for, for the city of Santa Cruz and also maintenance. Uh, you know, we checked in with the uh, city uh, engineer about that and he was he, he prefers the wrought iron way above anything that you paint yeah. Anna Cruz resident I can testify to those um, all right so how can you use the tunnel to reach Fort Ord and how does that then link to General Mall so the uh the existing um, segment that we're working on for Canyon Del Rey, the, the tunnel uh, under 218, as I mentioned right now, opens into uh, the, the Frog Pond uh, Wetlands Preserve. There are future um, segments of the, the Florida Regional Trail and Greenway Project that would pick up at uh, General Jim Moore. So the proposal for um, another, another tunnel um, underneath General Jim Moore um, that would connect into the, the spur uh, portion of the trail that goes into Ryan Ranch. And then also heading um, up north along the um, former Fort Ord, give access to um, the, the trails and the National Monument, and then connecting up through um, Seaside, CSUMB, and Marina. So those are all um, future, um, future segments of the project. Okay. So why is the project going to start in Delray Oaks? Uh, why not with, for instance, Laguna Grande? We were able to uh, receive funding for this segment of the project. Um, it has, uh, as, I, as I mentioned on the, the um, slide showing all the connections, um, this, this portion of the project um, has a, a lot of uh, um, great opportunities to connect into to other um, trail projects. It also has independent utility. Um, so there's a natural termini for a beginning and an end for the project that ends up at the Delray Woods School. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, it, it links up with four different uh, uh, parks in the area. So this is just a really uh, um, a really advantageous segment to be able to start with. Uh, maybe it had a, a lot of positive aspects to it that made it a strong candidate for grant funding. 
Mm -hmm. And it, it, because it's in the urban area, it will have the highest ridership and users uh, users as well, right? So um, yeah, when it connects to the to the rec trail, that's where a lot of people want to go to. So without a doubt, you know, best best use of dollars, right? Okay, how much attention will be paid to the other end of the North Fremont bike trail? In, into Seaside. We might need to wait for a clarification. I think they're referring to like the Casa Verde and- Oh, the South End, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so we know we have the class three facility running along Casa Verde to, to the rec trail. Um, it is rather challenging because there isn't this insufficient right of way, but that is a connection. The connection going along Fairgrounds Road and to Mark Thomas is actually a class two facility with really nice um, connection to Mark Thomas, which then gets you into the city then as well. So, so that facility, I think there may be options there for um, in the, and I think it's in the city's future bike plan to actually do some buffered bike lanes there, but they will be class two with buffers, painted buffers along them. Um, so there will be um, continued enhancements, um, you know, getting to Mark Thomas and then into the city. Okay. Um, what other options were explored for uh, the recreational trail? There are some concerns about uh, routing it through a cul-de-sac street. Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, we did look at some different alternatives for uh, the, the trail alignment. Um, particularly, we did look at um, routing it along um, State Route 218 in Canyon Del Rey and the, the physical constraints along with the safety issues um, on that roadway. Uh, made that uh, not a, a viable alternative to use for the alignment. Um, so the, uh, the one that was selected through the environmental process is the preferred alternative. Um, it, uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, linking up with uh, different uh, parks in the area. Um, sorry, I don't have the, the map up, but um, uh, with the, the cul-de-sac, I believe uh, re referencing Angeles Way. So on either end of Angeles Way, uh, there's the, uh, the Work Memorial Park and there's an existing uh, 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 a roadway that connects uh, near uh, Work Memorial Park that we're able to use uh, for the trail that um, comes out right by Rosita and Angeles Way. And then on the opposite side of Angeles Way, there's uh, Delray Park with an existing trail as well that we'll be able to, to pave and repurpose for uh, this project. Um, and so the uh, Angeles Way itself is uh, currently just a, a shared use road. So bicycles and pedestrians can currently use it. And that's how it would be in the the after condition as well, um, based on the feedback that we heard from the residents about not making any um, improvements on the roadway. Um, uh, we uh, took that to heart and uh, are not proposing any um, physical improvements on the roadway, um, just putting in signage to direct people to either ends of the trail um, where they, they can pick up the start at the end. Great. Uh, how much usage is anticipated for the bike lanes? Um, I think we spoke to that earlier that we don't, I, I don't currently at this moment have uh, usage data. Um, that's something oh, that anticipated. I'm not current, but anticipated. Oh, anticipated. I can't, I can't speak to the volumes. Do we know? So we, um, there's some research out there that shows that if you provide safe and um, adequate bike lanes, that bicycle ridership goes up. Um, one of the elements that was talked about in the with the medium bike lanes along more north Fremont is you know it also improves access for for bicycles to the to the retail area right so um, you know we we if if a if a rec, if a trail facility is is becoming well connected and it's well used um, you know you can see growth from about one to two percent to eight or ten percent no problem. Um, you know, the, the, the Monterey Rec Trail along the coast is probably a great example. When that was built, it was hardly used. And I think right now at the, at the um, Casa Verde crossing, I think we see 5,000 bikes a day you know, using the facility. So that shows you the growth that has occurred and people wanting to use the facility. So it is, there, there is research um, available to talk that talks about 
how if you build it, they will come. And it's the same with bicycle lanes and bicycle and trail facilities as well. I think uh, we're definitely seeing it in my neighborhood with the uh, opening of that new section of the Santa Cruz rail trail. Lots more bicyclists out as it gets more and more useful and connected. Okay, we've got another, uh, oops, sorry, a few more questions just came in. It might have been a lag. Uh, we've got another question asking for a bit more clarification about uh, can the turn area design improve, can the turn area design improve on the bike turn lanes crossing North Fremont at Casanova? The existing egress and approach ramps are sharp and abrupt. Is there enough space available to make turns and ramps more gradual? I'll refer to, to your team on this one, Frederick. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're going to touch the existing infrastructure, um, right. but, we, but we can be more receptive at, um, as we call it, the A, B to, a to C landing. Um, do we know the current running slope of the existing ramps? I don't have the, that information right in front of me for those existing ramps, but the um, area is very tight. Um, but our idea with um, the graphic that Frederick showed earlier, we would try and make that um, A to C connection as natural and um, not as abrupt as the 90 degree turns that are required for the current uh, ingress and egress. So the A to C would be uh, more of a natural path of the bike traveling up and down those ramps. I think it's important to realize, to, to, to remember that when the North Fremont um, project was done with especially the pedestrian and the bicycle crossings, the intent was to actually slow vehicles down and provide shorter crosswalks for pedestrians. So you improve safety, you provide more capacity for cars. Um, you know, so, so yes, the 90 degree turns will go away for the bikes with that diagonal connection across. Um, Okay, uh, we have a two part question. So I'll start with the first one. All right, regarding the intersection buttons for bikes, is there an opportunity to position them to be more convenient? Um, E.g. the one at Casa Verde and North Fremont requires getting off your bike, going up to the sidewalk to access the button, um, which they note isn't particularly visible from Casa Verde and the people are only where it exists because there is actually a bike traffic light. So if you, if you travel along the, uh, the, the medium bike lanes and you're going northbound and you get to, to Casanova, right, you'll have to push the button to activate the, and it's, it's like that if you wanna miss the trail, right? So you push the button, you wait, it's gonna stop all the traffic and you will have a bike signal that would take you where the dots are diagonally across and you will get on. So we're gonna, that area is gonna be redone to have a ramp for the bikes that you can then drive up and get on the trail and continue further north. If you're coming from the north across the bridge, right? The pedestrian bridge and past the pg &E line, there will be um, some wayfinding signage. And if you're a cyclist, it will tell you you're gonna push the button and there will be a waiting area for you um, with potentially a green box. You're gonna push the button. The signals will all reset. You will get your bike signal. That will be the scramble phase. And then you continue on your bike and you go straight onto the, onto the medium bike lanes. Um, so it will be, um, you know, you will eliminate the, the second signal having to push the button and you can actually ride your bike as well. So it's not, you don't need to get off. You actually just sit and wait at the signal. Um, I mean, in, in any city where there are signal crossings or intersections and you are on your bicycle, you know, you either need to wait for cars and if there's bike detection, it'll pick you up and you will get green. So, you know, the, that, that movement is very typical in an urban setting for bicycles. So, um, I, I, you know, we're actually making it so much better and the fact that you're gonna continue faster, I think, um, especially the avid cyclists, it's gonna be really convenient for them. So Frederick, uh, one of the advantages, I guess, of doing it this way is you get an immediate follow-up question. Um, so I'm just gonna read this one straight. Thank you, Frederick, but the request was Please position them to be more convenient than at Casa Verde and Fremont for people coming up the hill. 
So very clear. <laughs> very clear. Yes. Okay. So so uh, at, at well, this uh, sorry, I was talking Casanova. At Casaverde is a little different, right? But at Casanova. Um, so coming down the hill, I, I guess it's coming down Casanova and then coming towards North Fremont, right? Um, you, if you're coming from the side street, right, you would still need to get onto the sidewalk, right, where the, where the, at, at that corner, push the button, then you would go into the median and then continue on the, on the median bike lane, right? The, the intent of these dots are is really to connect you from the south to the north. Any east-west movement from any of the side streets still requires you to, 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 to carry on the side street, get to the, where the bicycle button is, cross the first half of North Fremont, and then you get into the median. Okay, I'm gonna dive a bit further into these questions. All right, with the new bulb out at Casa Verde and North Fremont, if there is a car in the traffic lane, someone biking up Casa Verde can no longer get to the top of the slope and put their foot down to be able to better able to get a start across the intersection. It's difficult to stop and then start if you're on a bike. Um, is there any place in the design that would involve significant slope, sorry, in any place in the design that involves significant slope at an intersection? Please consider the need for people who who bike who need to put their foot down for one of those stop starts, uh, potentially a curb or a metal foot rest. Uh, the grading for the gap closure, uh, we wouldn't anticipate any of those um, steeper approach slopes, but um, that is something that we would consider. Great. Uh, you go, Frederick. Joe, I have a, uh, if I can share my screen, I have that intersection map up with the dots again, if we wanted to talk a little bit. Okay. So if I may, so if, if you're coming down um, Casanova, right, then what you need to do is you need to get off, right, get the push button, right, and then you get into the bicycle facility and then you continue on the bike lane. Um, also, if you go westbound, the same, right? You're going to get off, you're going to cross, get in here and do this. Um, since the, the bigger demand is north-south, right? So, so with the dots, what we show is you show up here, you push the button, you're going to see there's going to be a signal head here for the bicyclist, and then he'll cross over and get into the bike lane. Coming from the north, the cyclist is going to wait here, push a button, there's going to be a signal head here for him. Right, and he can cross and then get into the bike lane and continue. Does that help? See, okay. All right, uh, moving on. 12 feet seems narrow when shared by wheelchairs, skateboarders, scooters, strollers, pedestrians, runners, e-bikes, traditional bikes, and so on. Uh, <laughs> any options, I guess, to Sure, um, I'll take that one too. Um, the Caltrans minimum for this type of facility would be an eight foot paved path um, with shoulders. Um, so we are proposing to have it be the 12 feet um, that allows for more of that, uh, more space for those different types of users to occupy. Um, I think uh, wider could be considered, but I think the cost obviously of the structure um, and the considerations, we do have a pg e line um, that has uh, some potential conflicts with our abutments in the ESA area. Um, we're very constrained to make that any wider than the 12 feet we already have. Um, so I, I think the 12 feet is probably where we will land. Okay, uh, one more question on this one. I uh, hope I get it right. For more than a decade, Delray Oaks residents and others have asked for bike lanes on Canyon Del Rey in the section from Fremont to the Coastal Trail, with the answer always being, can't do anything about it, it's up to Caltrans. Please advise whether the need for bike lanes on Fremont 
on the Fremont to Coastal Trail section of Canyon Del Rey has been discussed with Caltrans in planning this project or any other time recently. Um, well, it is a, a Caltrans facility, so it would be um, a Caltrans project to install the bike lanes on there. Um, Frederick, do you have uh, information related to the, the corridor study, um, if that alternative was considered? Uh, correct, Mike, yeah. I, so I was, um, you know, in the, um, TAMSI conducted the Highway 218 corridor study uh, and, uh, and it turned it into a complete street all the way from the ocean, in, you know, down to uh, the end of down to actually um, Highway 68, and those alternatives included um, Class Two and uh, Class Four semi-protected bike lanes along the facility. Um, Caltrans was part of that conversation. Caltrans um, also was there when we had the community workshops. Um, they also, uh, you know, um, attended the presentation of the, of, of the project to the TAMSI board, um, and they also provided comments on the actual uh, study itself. So, yes, Caltrans has been involved. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, we've got a, a comment as well as a question. So numerous vehicles have had accidents impacting the existing bike lane on Fremont. Who was responsible for footing the bill for repairs to this bike lane? Uh, that would default to our, our financial team and I, I believe uh, insurance claims, um, but, but ongoing maintenance is, is the city's responsibility. We do um, I have to make those repairs as, as the accidents occur. But I'm fairly confident that we go after uh, insurance for that. Okay. Uh, was 14 foot, was a 14 foot width explored? Um, we have not explored a 14 foot in terms of cost or exactly how it would fit but like I mentioned earlier the 12 feet is very constrained already with both construction um, uh, methods to install the foundations for the abutments um, and so we know we have not uh, looked at 14 feet. Okay. How long would construction be anticipated to take, particularly on Fremont to Safeway, if concerns about potential gridlock of traffic? Um, well, the uh, construction, uh, once we uh, put the project out to bid and bring a construction team on, we'll uh, be able to, to put the schedule together. Uh, the, the, typically for these projects, the, the construction will be um, done in segments, but uh, complete segments completed so that uh, it's not left um, in a disturbed state for an extended period of time. Um, we work with uh, both the, the city, Caltrans, um, City of Delray Oaks, um, Monterey and Seaside, particularly in this area, uh, to provide notices and to um, you know, make sure that we're managing uh, traffic flow in that area so that we're not uh, blocking up traffic for an extended period of time. Okay, uh, a question about funding. So <laughs> given that this is an inner city recreational uh, trail, how is the funding being arranged between the different cities that benefit from this project? Um, so the city of Monterey is acting as lead agency on the project, um, our, our wonderful NCIP committee um, funded the design of the project. Um, and so that, that's where we're at right now. There's no, um, other than cooperation, there's, there's no financial, um, no financial commitments from Seaside right now. Um, uh, but they've, they've been helpful and they're really supportive of the project, uh, but no inner city, um, partnerships with, in terms of funding it. And so we're acting the city of Monterey will be the lead agency for the design, lead agency for um, environmental and we're, we're, we're the ones really spearheading the movement at this time. We'll be the ones applying for grants as well. 
we can say there's very, very close collaboration between the cities and TAMSI. You know, if you think about TAMSI is represented by the cities, right? So they sit on their technical advisory committee, they sit on their board. So, so they don't underestimate that collaboration that happens between TAMSI as being the, the regional authority that helps the city get actually get grant funding and also is that leg to Caltrans and, uh, you know, for, for funding sources. So um, it, is, it is really a partnership that gets these grant funds going. Uh, we've got a question on potential trail maintenance and what the plans are to prevent uh, potential camp encampments being built along the trail. Uh, that was all, certainly always a consideration. Um, there's only so much we can do. It's really an enforcement, an enforcement issue. Um, we're, we're conscious of the population that's down there in the area, uh, but there's, there's only so much as, as an engineering uh, team that we, we can do, but uh, it is in the city of Monterey and it's an enforcement issue. And if I could add on to that as well, um, uh, typically with areas of the unhoused population, they're looking for places where they're encampment that are um, tucked away and a little bit more secluded. And putting in trails and uh, bringing people out into open spaces, um, you know, makes uh, uh, those types of things more visible. Um, uh, so it's uh, not as uh, attractive uh, place to to put up an encampment. Um, and at least for our portion of the trail, we are working closely with the, the city of Delray Oaks, um, their the city manager and their police chief, on making sure that uh, um, enforcement and safety of the trail is a high priority. Okay. Uh... During construction, uh, how will traffic be impacted on Canyon Del Rey and what are the uh, diversion opportunities and plans? So Mike, if I can help out, so, so on, on, on Canyon Del Rey, I would say the, the options in Seaside, you know, there are plenty of options in Seaside itself, um, you know, there's a, grid network um, that runs east west, um, you know, towards Highway 68 and further down into Delray Oaks, um, the options would probably then be Highway 68, right? That is the, the roadway or um, they could be because there's, and then through Seaside as well, right? So, so, so there are options, but these options will go through some residential neighbors and it's gonna be an all, um, a, 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 a driving around. I, it could also be that the road doesn't get closed in its entirety, right? We could, um, you know, as you construct it, you could close certain lanes and you can have the lanes open in peak times um, or have traffic control, um, you know, but there will definitely, as with all construction, there will always be congestion. Um, but we always look forward to the benefit of having the installation and the facility in afterwards. And then we drive, um, uh, you know, after that, uh, life will carry on as usual. And I could expand on that part as well. Uh, the, the portion of the, uh, the four-tag trail along um, that area, if we're talking about the uh, portion closest to, to Fremont and, and um, Safeway, uh, the, uh, the, the majority of uh, that portion is uh, utilizing the existing sidewalk. So the, the impacts to the roadway are, are minimal. And um, uh, as, as Frederick mentioned, uh, the possibility for maybe a lane closure, but a, a uh, I think we would try to avoid as much as possible. I don't think Caltrans would um, uh, allow a, a full closure of State Route 218. Um, so the, to the extent um, that uh, there, there would be impacts, you know, potential uh, lane closures, but um, uh, I wouldn't think that uh, diversions would be uh, entirely necessary. Great. Uh, just a note on future trail maintenance that uh, the trees on the new North Fremont lanes sometimes hang low enough that a person on an upright bike has to duck. So just a, a note for future maintenance. Thank you. Uh, uh, we've had a couple of comments come in about uh, work memorial park and concern that you know it's a, essentially a according to some of the members of the community it, it's just a field and a floodplain and so um, utilizing that are we able to dive into that certainly the um uh, 
the intention for the the city for that area is to to make it uh, uh, a park uh, to to restore a portion of that area. Um, if you think back to uh, um, the the history of the frog pond, it used to be a, a pasture, and it, it wasn't necessarily the the wetland preserve that we see today. Um, so the the restoration of the work that that took place in the frog pond took an area that was. Uh, disturbed and, and you know, brought it back to a, a natural state. That there's trails and people you know, love to, to be able to walk through there and, and enjoy nature. And that's certainly in the, I believe that's the intention for the city of Delray Oaks to have something similar with Work Memorial Park as well. And uh, bringing uh, Portag into this area gives us an opportunity to possibly do some of that restoration work. As I mentioned, we'd be utilizing a portion of the hall road that's already in there so that we're not uh, disturbing any more of the area. And then the portion of the hall road that's um, not contemplated to be used for the, the trail that could potentially be um, uh, taken out and then that area uh, restored back to wetland. Okay. Uh, we've got a follow up question looking for clarification on the construction by Safeway. Um, just finding out whether or not there would be any full street closures uh, for the tunnel construction. For the tunnel construction, I don't believe that that's uh, anticipated. I think the other method said you can actually keep the roadway in place and actually construct the actual under crossing without impacting traffic um, over on the roadway itself. Exactly. Thank you, Frederick. Great. Uh, are there any issues with potentially taking, sorry, potentially building a trail through uh, the, a flood zone? For our portion of the trail, uh, as I mentioned, we're looking to uh, maintain um, existing drainage patterns uh, that are um, already there and uh, constructing the trail with positive drainage um, so that we won't uh, run into flooding issues. All right, uh, we've had a member, good question actually to finish tonight on. A uh, member of the community is asking what will be done with all of the ideas, comments, feedback that's been gathered tonight? Um, will they see a potential changes or modifications to the design? What happens next? Um, all, all comments will be considered um regarding the, the path width we're relatively constrained on the, the bridge, as we mentioned, uh, due to existing conditions with the environmentally sensitive area and um, pg and &E facilities. Uh, but your, your foot down accommodations and easy access to crossing buttons and uh, smoother, less abruptive turn ramps um, are, are all great, great inputs. Um, the, the next generation of design and plans, um, we'll, we'll put those out to the public when, when we get there. Great. Uh, so that's all the questions we've got time for tonight. Um, I will hand it back to Max and Mike to close the meeting out. Yeah, I want to thank our, our presenters and um, everybody who attended this evening. Um, we're, we're open for further input. You can um, please go to have your say at monterey.org to take the survey, or you can email um, my, myself as a city representative at uh, reser at monterey.org. That's R I E S E R at monterey.org uh, for any further comments. Um, we're welcome to them. Um, and it was, it was a pleasure opening this dialogue and presenting the projects. Thanks again uh, to Mike at TMC and our Kimley Horn team. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a good night, everyone.